Hey folks, Mark Yerkes here coming to you from Duras, Albania, what many call the Miami of the Albanian coast, where we're going to be taking a look at a little bit of church history. As you can see behind me, I am at the port of Duras, which is the largest port in Albania. And it, the history goes all the way back to the Roman Empire when this was a major port. This is also the place where the Via Ignatia began its great course all the way to Constantinople. Behind me now you can see the Venetian Tower built in the 16th century by the Venetians along with the wall that surrounded the city at that time. But that's a whole different century. We are going to look further back in history, all the way back into the Roman times. So stay tuned. Durus was established by Greek colonists from Corinth in the 7th century BC, but later it became an important city of the Roman Empire as it grew under the name Dyrrachium. Yet its major impact on history did not come until the year 48 BC, when the Battle of Dyrrachium took place between the armies of Julius Caesar and the leader of the Roman senatorial armies, General Pompey. Pompey had been defeated in Spain, but he escaped to Greece where he raised a new army. He wanted to invade Italy from the port of Dyrrachium. Knowing this, Julius Caesar ordered his army to surround Pompey's and lay siege to the city. Pompey was eventually able to break the siege and gain a victory, only to be completely defeated a month later on the plains of Pharsalus. Nearly a hundred years later, another great war campaign would begin. A spiritual warfare, as the gospel spread throughout the Roman world. There is a major road hugging the coastline around the Bay of Duras. Here at the port, it is named Ruga Ignatia, which is the Albanian translation of Via Ignatia. Durus, or Dyrrachium in ancient times, was the major port where the Via Ignatia began or ended, depending upon which direction you were going. It stretched from Byzantium, renamed Constantinople in the 4th century and Istanbul today, and the road led all the way across the Balkans to Durus, where people could catch a ship to Italy. The phrase all roads lead to Rome, was definitely true during the Roman Empire. Some parts of the ancient Via Ignatia are still visible, which is a testament to how well the Romans built their roads. They had to be well built because their purpose was twofold. They were the means by which the Roman legions could quickly get to many parts of the empire to put down rebellions and they were a major means of commerce to keep Rome supplied with trade goods. The Apostle Paul traveled on a section of the Via Ignatia when he went from Philippi to Thessaloniki to Berea. Paul wrote in Romans 15 verse 19, From Jerusalem and round about even unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. The Catholic historian Farlati, in his work Illyricum Sacrum, noted that Durus was the site of the first church in Albania and was established by Paul. To offer existing this emertime to see it. Here in Duras, a place exists which is called Kepi Pali, which is named after Paul being there. And also, Paul in his letter was saying that he was going to camp for the winter in the city of Nicopolis. Nicopolis was a city that belonged in the time to Illyrians, and today is called Preveza. Krahinen e Iliris sa sai periude. 
there is no certain evidence of this. But even if Paul did not actually go as far as Durus, it is possible that his co-worker Titus did. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, during his final imprisonment, Paul wrote that Titus had gone to Dalmatia, which was northwest of Durus along the coast. But there is another way that the gospel could have spread to Durus that can still be attributed to Paul. During his first imprisonment in Rome, he was chained to members of the Praetorian Guard, which consisted primarily of Illyrian soldiers. Paul states, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. It is fair to say that Paul was not chained to Illyrian guardsmen, but that they were chained to him, and they definitely heard the gospel. Some probably got saved and brought the gospel with them when they returned to Dyrrhachium. Dyrrhachium had its share of Christian martyrs, although nothing is recorded prior to 98 AD. In that year, the Emperor Trajan ordered a persecution against Christians. Many left Italy and came to Albania. The bishop of the church here was a man named Astius. Agricola, the governor of Durus, ordered that he be arrested and that he make sacrifice to the idol of the god Dionysus. Astius refused in the name of Jesus Christ. He was then whipped and beaten with rods, and still he refused. Finally, he was crucified. But to add to the pain of crucifixion, they had him smeared with honey so that flies and wasps would sting him to death. It was a terrible, terrible martyrdom. Durus, both the Catholic and the Orthodox churches, now considers Astius to be its patron saint. And this location, just outside the wall, is where scholars believe that Astius was crucified. But this was not the end of the story. Seven godly men who had escaped persecution in Italy and come to Albania were so emboldened by the faith and confession of Astius that they too proclaimed Christ as Lord. They were ordered to recant, but they refused. As a result, they were taken out to the Adriatic Sea and drowned. When we look out at the sea today, this may be the very spot where they gave their lives. Saint Astius is a martyr in the first century. But throughout the 3rd century, we have different martyrs, not only in the 3rd century, but continuously throughout the history of Christianity. These ruins are what remains of the ancient Roman form during the Byzantine period. They are by no means complete, but this is what would have been the middle of the marketplace. The actual shops would have been on the outside of the circle, where the modern city has encroached. But we can always use our imagination to picture what it was like. The Forum was often the center of economic, social life and government rule. In many Romanized cities, such as we see in the ruins of Corinth, Greece, the bima, or judgment seat, was located in or nearby the Forum, so that the heavy hand of government authority was visible to everyone. Picture Astias being beaten and whipped in just such a place, surrounded by jeering citizens before being condemned to death. Where I am standing is probably the most visited site in all of Duras. This is the amphitheater, discovered only in the 1960s and excavated built by the Emperor Trajan in the early 2nd century. It held, in the times of the Roman Empire, 15 to 18,000 spectators. This is the second largest amphitheater in all of the Balkans. As one would expect, 
the gladiator fights were the main attraction. I realize that it's difficult to see inside this tunnel, but this is the main entrance into the arena. This was probably the place where the gladiators came marching in to do battle to the applause of the crowd. Between the years 235 and 311 AD, five emperors carried out horrific persecutions of the church, all of whom seemed to have an insatiable desire to destroy Christianity. We had many Christians that were martyred in the amphitheater of Doris, and the place is living evidence of Christian persecution. Among the so-called entertainments of the amphitheater were terrible executions of Christians in whatever manner that evil minds could conjure, including crucifixions, using them as archery targets, and feeding Christians to wild animals like lions and leopards. Archaeologists have identified this gateway as the location where animals were kept and released into the arena. How many Christians were killed in this arena? We may never know, but we know there had to have been plenty. It continued all the way until the signing of the Edict of Milan in 313 AD by the Emperor Constantine, and even then it was a few years before all the persecutions ended. The gladiator combats continued until the beginning of the 5th century when they eventually were outlawed. The amphitheater itself fell into disrepair due to earthquakes, but it found another purpose. You might say a second life. The exterior of an ancient chapel can be seen protruding from the side of the public seating area. And within the corridors, visitors can find even more evidence of a church. This iron gate, built just opposite the windows of the external chapel built into the side of the arena, protects mosaics that were built by the early church of saints and the angel Gabriel. And to the left, just along the corridor, is a well. And it is believed that the water from this well was used for baptisms of new converts into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And finally, here in the center of the arena is a further proof of God's power to protect his church. Just outside the windows of the chapel is an area of unexcavated ground which is known to have been the cemetery for this church. The irony should not be lost on anyone that in a place where so many Christians were killed, martyred for their faith, it is now a resting place for their mortal remains awaiting the resurrection. The singing. I hope that you have the same confidence as these early believers. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what is keeping you from accepting God's gift of eternal life? Today is the day of salvation. Do not wait until it's too late. Thank you for joining me on this visit to Duras, Albania. Please visit our website, videoparables.org, for more interesting videos.